All right, I'm on the way home from work today. Fantastic day. I made, I made man, I made progress. <sighs> Sometimes you go to work and you have a good day. This is one of them days. All right, so I'm on the way home. I'm stuck in traffic, as you can see. Traffic and rain just all coming down. Heading back to my undisclosed bunker in the woods. Now, this video here. So as I was in traffic, I started thinking about Kimbo Slice versus Dada 5000. What went wrong? What could have been done differently? I mean, the ratings were off the chart. The ratings were through the roof. I watched the press conference and before I watched the fight and it's, it's hilarious. It's, it's funny in one way because you hear them say, Dada said he was gonna, gonna retire Kimbo. He was gonna put hands on him. Dada said that uh, only two people coming out the ring alive. Or, sorry, only two people will be able to walk out the ring under their own power. And that would be Dada 5000 and the referee. Didn't go that way. Actually, Kimbo and the ref came out and Dada was carried on a stretcher. But, you know, Dada 5000 said his body failed him. And I, I begin to think about that seriously. Because I, I went back and I watched the fight. You could see he had some kind of strategy because he was working on Kimbo's legs with inside knees and stamping on his foot, trying to get the foot, the, Kimbo's foot tender, like uh, to get the foot tender and the muscles sore so he, Kimbo wouldn't be able to stand and punch properly. You could, you could see Dada doing that. You could see Dada trying to take him down, but he gassed out. All right, fine. He did gas out. And it turns out his cardio was bad. But in addition to his cardio being bad, I don't think his body was in the type of condition to endure that kind of beating that he took. Because, I mean, in a backyard fight, you get punched in the face, knocked out or whatever. And from the backyard fights I've seen, it's over pretty quick. It's less than two, three minutes. Now, if he's training for a less than a two, three minute style fight, more likely he didn't come prepared and he got banged out real bad. Now, Kimbo Slice was exhausted because Kimbo Slice weighed in at like two, 235, 225. That a 5,000 hydrated up to a full 300 and change or something like that, or the 280. So he said he was exhausted from picking up that a 5,000 every time that a 5,000 had him. And, I, and that a 5,000 had him in, in, in the guillotine a couple of times, but he managed to power his way out of it. And that may have drained his energy. And those two guys have heart, so I, I, give them, I, I give that to them. But I think the part that really concerned me is the fact that Dada 5000 got the title shot and the exposure so fast without getting a good team around him to train him to, to help his develop his body you know I you know I'm curious like what were his trainers doing in terms of helping him work on his skills his nutrition I, sorry I'm yawning but it's one thing about Conor McGregor. He has people around him that help him work on his nutrition, his endurance, he has the motion coach. He surrounded himself, I mean, you can say anything you want to say about him, but he surrounded himself with the right people and he, he's highly motivated. Same thing with Nate Diaz. So, looking back over Dada 5000, Kim Muslice fight, I just think that, like Dada said, his body failed him because he had renal kidney failure. And then a heart attack because your body was so dehydrated. It's, it's like, you know, a, a man of his stature, he's probably used to eating more than 3,000 calories a day. And if he was starving himself to make the weight, his body was can, probably cannibalizing itself. And when that happens, that usually lead, lead to organ failure. By the way, I learned that from watching uh, my favorite show on the History Channel, Call Alone. I wanted to be on the show but the wife and the kids said, no, nah, not for all the money in the world. They know I could, I could survive in the woods if I had to. I'm a country boy. I could do it. Yeah, I could. But anyhow, so when you start starving, your body starts cannibalizing itself. And then at some point you get to organ failure. Now, when I saw Dada 5000 during the fight, at some point you look in his eyes 
and they were fully dilated. It's almost as if nobody was home. Now Kimbo Slice, he gassed out, but he he's able to he, he he's able to take a pounding because he's he, he's been in in in, in Boxing and martial arts for quite some time, so, so he can take a couple body shots and he can take a pony. But I think that at 5,000 was almost as if some guy just walked in fresh off the street, didn't know what they was in for, and get really, really, really banged up. It takes time for your body to get used to that type of being punched in the abdomen. Being you know, it, it takes time for your body to get used to that type of abuse, you know, even that. I, 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 um, one of the gyms I used to train, one of the exercises that we had was training how to take a punch in your stomach. So, so, so you'd actually get hit. You stand there, uh, the, the, the instructor will put on a boxing glove, you breathe out. So you ready? Yeah, ready? Here it comes. And you get that punch in your stomach and you, you know, learning how to take a hit. Because what happens is that if you train and you're not don't know how to take a hit or roll with a punch. You 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 get hurt real bad, and I, I think that was where that was what was was lacking in, in 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 that camp. But overall, the ratings were spectacular. I will give Bellator that the, the the ratings for that event was just mind blowing. They did a fantastic job. So I know I said I, I wouldn't want to see another Dada Five Thousand Kimbo Slice rematch, but I I've been thinking about it on the way home, and. The possibility exists that I could stomach another rematch from these guys if if they really put the training in. Like, I mean, Kimbo Slice, his body style and his muscles and the way he's built, he's got so much to offer the sport if he would just train properly, work on the ground game, work on Muay Thai kicks, work on some leg strikes. It, 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 it's... It, it's it, it, it's almost like you see Glover, Glover Textera. He, his comeback, his fighting ability, the things that he's doing. If Rampage Jackson made up his mind, he could do that too. So I, I think so. So I think that's the part that's kind of throwing me off here. I mean, I I I, I know it was a rush to get the fight, and in that a five thousand position, if you want the money, you, you I mean, it's, it's a big opportunity. He didn't want to blow it, so he took a chance, and and then you know, thank God he didn't lose his life, because you know he's taking care of his mother, uh, his family just lost right before going into that that event, his he just lost a family member, that one of his family member died, so no, he his death that that family, his family would have would have been would have were, were taken a loss two times, his uncle's death plus his death, so that that would have been hard on them, so I'm glad. That he was able to survive, and I I hope that a lot of guys, young guys out there, and fighters learn from this. I've learned from it myself, uh, and I I started taking care of my better care of myself in terms of my nutrition, and in terms of how I do my my, my weight loss. I've always been doing it, it it safely, but one of the things I've been doing sometimes I'll notice that I'll bulk up in muscle, but I'll stop working until the size of my muscles shrink, and then afterwards. Try and, and, and get the weight, you know. So it's, it's, it's hard when you have a, you have a bulky body and you can put down muscle real fast. It's hard to make the weight and that type of stuff. Uh, and that's what I'm working through myself. So I can only imagine what a big guy like that at 5,000 had to endure to be able to get in the ring. So my take on that at 5,000 mixed martial arts career, if I had to call it, I would say maybe at some point in the future he'll be able to fight. But I really see potential in him as a promoter. Because this guy can talk trash, man. If he had the skills to back up the trash he talk, he'd be one of the world's greatest fighters. But unfortunately, that's not the situation. But he does have the skills to market and make a mountain out of a molehill. And I think that's what backfired on him. After he got the loss, then he came out and said he died twice now, that type of stuff. That type of negative attention that he drew to himself. I mean, he did get good press. But when you say that you had a heart attack and that type of stuff, you know, and you died twice and you, you know, you, you, you kidney, when, when you make a, when, if you had just keep quiet, if you, if you just kept quiet about all that stuff and let the, 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 the hospital or whoever or other family members get, not the hospital because 
but by they, they can't release your medical records and type of information without your consent. But if you had let his family members put their word out there, hey, it was a rough fight for him, he almost died, fans, thank you for praying for him, that would have been one thing. But by him putting that word out there, it's almost like if you're Scott Croker, you're like, okay, well, if this guy gets back in the ring based on what I just saw, he could die. Let me um let me think about this. Let, let's put him on ice for now. And move Kimbo on to the next event. So Kimbo is gonna be fighting overseas. Uh, I believe it's in London. I, I don't remember whose opponent is. I'm, I'm gonna get that information and, and give it to you guys soon. But for right now, I said that at five thousand. His best bet is to promote his 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 events. Now I've seen the ring that he's promoting, the cage, the, the, the cage that uh, that he came up with. Brilliant idea. It's a triangle, not an octagon. There's no way to run in it. I mean, you're in that thing, you're going to have to face your opponent and you're going to have to fight. So those fights will probably go quickly. I think that there's barely enough room in that, that thing for a, 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 maybe a, even a leg kick. Or a, you, 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 yeah, it, 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 there's no mixed martial arts movement in that. That's all straight up boxing, you slugging it out and trying to make it happen. Because the other guy can't move, go anywhere and you can't go anywhere. That's pretty much a, a slugfest type thing. And for him in Florida, that will catch on because he has a big name there. At one point, he said he was trying to reach out to Dan King and other big-time boxing promoters to have them invest in his ideas and do what he, he, he's, he's trying to do. But I think with his company and what he was able to achieve through the documentary, if he can legitimately find a way to register, get the proper license, get the proper athletic commissions, uh, approvals, he can make good money. I mean, don't 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 count that at five thousand out yet. He could get good good money. He has a good head on his shoulders. He could make some really good money. And in terms of coming back in MMA and making it, he, if he gets a good training camp, it could happen. He, he he could really come back and succeed. But it's gonna take, you know, like my friend and I we had a conversation about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and there's a guy in Maryland has a he has a a, a, a I was like, a one year to a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu program. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to badmouth this business, but he has a one year program, right? Somewhere in the state of Maryland. And he's, he's worked, yeah, I think he worked in the past, he's worked with Randy Couture and he's worked with a couple of MMA fighters. I think he, he worked with one MMA, MMA fighter that's from a place called Landover. I, I don't remember the, the name of the guy, but recently the guy was, was on a UFC card too. And he, I've, I've been to his gym, it's, it's, it's really sweet. He, he, he has, he, he's won a lot of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu awards and that type of stuff. But my friend was saying, "Hey, listen, it takes eight years to get a, a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a real, and to develop those skills and to become good. There's no way it can happen in a year. And, and I think what that of five thousand got to realize that you can't keep relying on boxing, and you can't keep relying on blunt force trauma. You got to develop your skills and develop your body. Even me." I, as a martial artist, I tend to have a habit too, where, you know, I, I rely heavily on striking, I don't focus on grappling, and I remember one, once I, I was messing around with this guy who was a wrestling champion, this was when I was in college, and I didn't know it at the time, I was fooling around with him, but he was able to just put me on the ground just by holding my shoulder and pulling forward and pushing down, like three times, and I was like, how did he do that? Then my friend, the Muay Thai man, Big Willie, said, hey, listen, dude. He's a state wrestling champ. He knows what he's doing. He's he's he, he he he's really good, really really good. And that's when I realized, hey, I had to fix my game up. So maybe this this butt whooping will get that at five thousand to fix his game up, and you go to a better training camp. Now, as for Kimbo Slice, I believe that his cardio issues would have been addressed had he continued to train with Bass Wooten. Now he said that. Spending his money with Bass Wooten was a waste of time. And maybe he thought that because maybe the things that Bass was teaching him at the time, he thought were elementary. But you got to understand is that whenever you start doing martial arts, you know, especially mixed martial arts, there's going to be a phase where you go through where you learn where everything seems like you're only doing elementary stuff. But once you get those fundamentals down and you're like a natural reflex to you, then you start developing more skills. So I believe that, you know, Kimbo Slice, for him right now, 
being in Florida where he is, I'm sure there's some Muay Thai people there. I'm pretty sure of that. And I'm sure if 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 he reached out to even Phil Davis or one of those other guys or work with Josh Koscheck or just start working more on making his striking game more rounded and his ground game and fix his cardio, I'm sure you know if, if he can prove himself, I'm pretty sure that Scott Croker will give him the title shot that he says he wants. It's going to be difficult to get a title shot run because now he's doing like these super, I guess, ratings type fight. Well, he he says he wants to be a serious contender for the belt. But in order for him to do that, he has to drastically improve. And I know, you know, as a, a person that fight, I believe that anybody, no matter who you are, can develop your skills to where you have the ability to win a fight no matter who you're going up against. Because, you know, and maybe it's me because I always watch those old Kung Fu movies where, you know, a guy get beat up. It's an old Kung Fu movie with, uh, come on, Jackie Chan. This is very old. But in this Kung Fu movie, there was this guy, this evil Kung Fu master who knew the snake style. And he would go, ah, psh, 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 and bite people and claw them up with the, with the snake bite style. And he beat Jackie Chan up real bad. And Jackie Chan went down for a new master. And the new master taught him the falcon and the eagle style. And then his eagle claw. Went, then when he fought the, the snake guy, he used his eagle claw. And he beat the snake guy. And the snake guy ran away and went and practiced up his snake style. And came back. And him and Jackie Chan had a showdown. But nonetheless, Jackie Chan still beat him. But, well, it's no different than any profession. If you work on yourself, you will become good. And I know that... Kimbo age is a factor, but Randy Couture was fighting, I mean, like a long time when he was way old. I forgot, I forgot his, the age he stopped fighting at. I think his last fight was when, uh, his last fight was with Lyota Machida, that uh, karate kid kicked to the head and then he had a concussion. I think that was his, his, his last fight. I gotta go back and check that. But Randy Couture, he's been in the game for a while. Emilio, Emilio Fader. He's, he's been in the game for a while, too. Uh, one of my favorite guys. Favorite of all time. Marco Korkop. He's been, in the, he's been in the game for a while. And his UFC uh, debut, he got knocked out, lost a couple fights. But when he came back and fought the same guys who beat him before, he was able to get, I wouldn't say revenge, but, but, but um, get back those losses that he had. So it's, 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 it's possible for Kimbo and Dada to do what they need to do and become like real, really excellent martial artists. And that's, that's what makes it exciting about the sport. Because you never know where somebody is. You know, one time BJ Penn was at the top of his game. Then the next time when he lost, he came back. I, I mean, granted GSP was a little afraid of him, so he all had his backup, but... When BJ Penn came back, I mean, he gave it his best shot. When BJ Penn came back there, uh, 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 the first time against Frankie Edgar, and Frankie Edgar wore him out. Then when he came back against GSP, GSP, I mean, messed him up real bad. But now, BJ Penn is training to say, hey, I still have something in the tank. But, you know, in my opinion, it's just me. I don't think BJ Penn is, is, is gonna his comeback is gonna go as well, because one thing about martial arts, it's a lifestyle. You gotta train every day. You can't be a businessman. You can't the other stuff. If, even if you do other stuff and you're a businessman, you gotta train every day to keep your skills sharp. Right? And, and even me, sometimes I slack off a week or two. But even if even around when I'm walking around the house, I get up in the morning, the 50 kicks, the 50 round houses. The punch, just, just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some shadow boxing, but you, you gotta keep your skills fresh. You gotta keep doing something. So, I believe we'll see Kimbo Slice and Data Five Thousand improve if they commit themselves to serious mixed martial arts, serious training, bringing outside people, get different looks. And I, I know you wanna be loyal to your gym. You don't wanna, you, you don't, you don't wanna make your coach. You don't want to leave your coach. Sometimes you're comfortable in a training camp. Well, even if you don't want to leave your coach, 
ask your coach, hey, listen, what can we do to make this more well-rounded? Let's bring in some other fighters. Let me spar him. Let me get some different looks and develop that that that, that ability. Because uh, you know, I, I I got a friend who is the current mirror. He, 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 uh, no, not now. I guess two years ago, he was the middleweight uh, uh, champion of Aki Jiu Jitsu in the state of Maryland. And he had owned a martial arts school. The school closed down, but he still kept his skills sharp. And he picked up mixed martial arts and opened another mixed martial arts school. But he realized that the wins. The wins, having the w those wins and those trophies in his shop would bring more business in. So he had to get his skills together and go out there and make it do what it do. So I believe if just long term, if Kimbo Slice and Dada 5000 want to last in this martial arts business and not get as much money as they can and cash out, they're going to have to commit, dig deep, train more seriously and make it happen. Now, Kimbo, I'm seeing some improvements in him. I'm seeing him do that. Every time I hear him talk, he's honest about what he needs to work on. And I, I, I hope he do it. I wish these guys the best because it's hard to come from just being a, a street fighter on YouTube to, 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 to do and be able to do things for your family. And I'm sure that I know it's the same way for him. He's doing things for his family and putting them in a better financial situation. And he probably want to be able to do more as a visionary. But it's, it's not going to be easy for him. But I'm going to pull it off. All right, guys, that's my more than two cents from the fight mobile. I'm pulling up in my, in my driveway in a few minutes. I probably got another video before I get to the house. But that's, that's just how I, I feel about this Dada 5000 Kimbo Slice thing and their career options and where it looks like they're going to go in Bellator. All right, guys, peace out, man, from the fight mobile.